The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. If you're building, or buying, or selling a home, the real estate crew's got news for you at the Real Estate House Party. With attorney Rick Carter. Real Estate House Party. Paralegal Kathy Holsthausen. Real Estate House Party. Come in, have fun. And comedian Tony V. Now, here's real estate attorney Rick Carter. Welcome. <laughs> and I appreciate you guys coming. Joining us here on the Real Estate House Party. Look at Tony. I didn't recognize That's him. That's not Tony. It's his twin brother. I know. Oh, it's the, the one it's from the Italy? Twi- yeah, it's, it's my, it's my it's double guest. This is Antonio. Hey, hey. how you doing? <laughs> hey, como esta? Oh, hey, hello, bene. Antonio from Italy. How are you doing? Hey, baby. You bene. should maybe tell that story, but we shouldn't introduce our guests yeah, and then we'll talk about your other family. Yeah. This is Meg, our, do we decide, Irish friend mm-hmm. yes. from Movement Mortgage. you got a lot of M's going on yeah. here. Yeah. got M and M squared all over the place. Well, honestly, here. that's only why I joined Movement Mortgage. <laughs> I really, I have a thing for you, alliteration. You didn't have to change the yeah. towels at all, right? right. Good exactly. idea. M times four. M times four, Tony, on that wow. one. Now, your husband also works at Movement Mortgage, too, right? Mm-hmm. He's How, my loan officer. He's your loan assistant. Oh, he's your oh, he's assistant. Your, assistant. Mm-hmm. your husband, your I assistant? Love that. Yeah, I tell, I tell everyone I'm the pretty face and <laughs> yeah. he's the back end. Now, yeah. was he your assistant? Did you meet him as, or was he your husband first and then had him as an assistant? No, so uh, we met through mutual friends and okay. then I decided to make a career change yep. and uh, talked about it too much at dinner. And so he's like, I got to see what this is about and then decided to come join me. How is nice. it working with you? How's so do you boss him around? Yes. So oh, you okay. boss him around at Kathy, home it's and at work? Kathy, Kathy, I cannot recommend not, it enough. Not all females <laughs> boss people around like you do. Am I right? Listen, well, if, no, there, I there's some... Look no, at, they do it differently. <laughs> <laughs> they might not do it like Kathy, but they have their way. Sure. Hey, listen, if I didn't boss you around, where would you be yeah, today? Oh, where would I be? What, right. uh, Meg, what was your other career before you had switched? So I worked in retail. I was store manager for CVS. Oh, yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. did you know Kathy as a... As a as a as clientele. A, a drug, a oh, you're not supposed user. to talk about that. <laughs> We're talking about that. She's got more lotions that she thinks are drug wow. induced. Fine business, the apothecary. <laughs> Fine business. No, I actually am here to tell you that the CBD thing, I think, is it, just a bunch think, of. You don't think it works? It's almost like. Um, Let's see, uh, like a like a stu- it's a, a it's a fad, a, a placebo, that, as Meg was saying, right? Yeah, yes, it gets yeah. you to think that you're you're. you're but I was trying to better. compare it to something else. It's like when you buy those. Um, have you ever got, ever seen this? You could send away at Better Homes and Gardens and buy like this mat that you could lay on your garden. And then yeah. put dirt on it, and yeah. then all oh, these beautiful flowers, flowers come up. Right. No, yeah, it's like oh, that. So it's you, like, you don't watch late night TV because every commercial is like that. None of it works. It's like the miracle, the miracle broom that, that's going to clean your house the for itself. The screwdriver that would make you MacGyver. <laughs> and oh, you can yeah. get Jealous. two of them for right. nineteen ninety nine if you pay the shipping or, and handling or, separately. Yeah, or three easy payments. Yeah. <laughs> So that's, they're never hard payments, no, are they? No, they're easy. Payments. They're easy. Yeah, they're, they're easy. easy My favorite one is uh, one of them. One of the home networks turns into like the knife channel. At, oh, at like two o'clock in the morning. Don't ask me how I. Know. <laughs> well, I think we can figure but, it out. But, you know, it's like the Home Shopping Club, and then all of a sudden, for like three hours, they're just selling knives. Oh, you can buy like like a hundred and twenty knives for forty bucks. And they and are and they so, like are they like um, no hunting weapons? knives yeah oh, oh yeah. weapons double edged things and uh, samurai who do you think and, that they're targeting at two in the morning spouses <laughs> <laughs> potential murderers <laughs> I mean you can get your Christmas shopping done all, <laughs> and one one fell swoop but I was watching one night and you know as I I am a you know stickler for detail and I'm watching the Knife Channel one night and uh, I take note of the fact. That the guy selling the knives is missing two fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to buy a shop implement from this guy. He obviously doesn't know what end to grab. Wow. And in a lot of things in life, you want to know which end to grab. I, you know, yeah. <laughs> yep. You need to be clear on that. Yeah. Meg said what she was doing beforehand. She worked at CVS. Now she's a mortgage originator. Yeah. Now she's thinking of how to get out of this business Back altogether. Yeah. Now so she's she thinking of how to get out of this <laughs> studio. You know, I'm, not, I'm thinking I have, you know, four fingers and a thumb, so yeah. I might be good at selling no, you're, 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 <laughs> You have a good for, couple for a years few, in you For anyway, a few yeah. months. Right, <laughs> yeah. right, right. Yeah, you know, yeah. Don't, don't bank on that forever. The, the, so. uh, the uh, drugstore makes me think of another thing I've been thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you know how 
they have uh, in this, this is takes, free association then, day. <laughs> well, it takes law into account too. Okay, you know, like you have client. We uh, did. You have client and and uh, we had one attorney. <laughs> Privilege, like yeah. you can't yep. tell anything about the client. Oh, yeah. I didn't know we had client, yeah, yeah. client, <laughs> like attorney, except client. for the podcast, right? <laughs> right, right. No, no, but if, I'm kidding. Yeah, you're right. If you have a client, right? Yeah, yeah. Doctors have the same thing. They yeah. have to say, you know, I got some real juicy stuff too. Yeah, of course. Stop. This is what, this is what I'm saying. Uh, drug stores the same way. Druggists, uh, chemists, uh, yeah, pharmacists, pharmacists, yeah, all the priests. Right. I don't care about those people. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if I'm jammed up with the law, I need a lawyer. If I'm <laughs> sick. I don't care. Right. I think we should have client privilege with other people, like the guy at the counter at the at the <laughs> you know when I buy my lottery tickets. I don't want him tell you know I don't want a guy going, hey Tony was buying two dollar scratch tickets with rolls of pennies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's doing as well as he makes out. That's the guy I think. So I should want transcend to everywhere. Yeah, that everywhere. There should be right. a little well, then bit. Rick about five. No, I, Right. Five Snickers bars last right, night. Right, right, And then he came back right. today right. and he the bought grocery. five more. Right. The grocery. Well, that is a good point. Right. Yeah. yeah. The grocery store person. No, that's a good point. No, he because... bought six cans of fluff and nutter. You know. No, because if I'm down at the CV or wherever and I'm buying rows and rows of uh, scratch Oreos. tickets. Right. I don't want to It doesn't sound like that. he's doing too well as a closing attorney. No. Right. right. And Those I bet you have um, kind of client client. Loan officer privileges. I mean, or um, oh, way but, to bring it back around. Cal. Yeah, oh, but Meg, <laughs> it's all exempt. I don't know if you've ever read the statute. Anything you can say anything on a podcast. Do you know? Do you know oh, how much so and so makes? Really, <laughs> and it doesn't really count. All right. So you probably see applications all the time where which so, that is kind of like standing in front of somebody naked. Like you learn everything about them in four pages, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and then if you pull their credit report, there's no hiding. All right, Meg, without yeah. mentioning any names, what's the what's the craziest thing you've <laughs> ever seen? Um, I pulled a credit for a guy who told me he had a 700 credit score, yeah. and uh, he ended up having a 420. <laughs> I actually, wow. I they tell you it goes all the way down to 300, right. and you're like, there's no possible way. Right. And then there's the day that you pull a credit below 500, and wow. you're like, wow, you really <laughs> he, can. He what thought did, you meant combined with his wife right. was going to get to 700. So what did he say when you had to make that phone call and say, um, you know, your 700 <laughs> credits I mean, go like, what could he possibly have said? I just kind of walked him through it and I was like, well, here's, you know, uh, everything. Here are, <laughs> How your, awkward. Here are your 27 <laughs> collection accounts. <laughs> and um, yeah, just call me in two years. <laughs> <laughs> Clean this <laughs> shit up. <laughs> hey. You might want to call somebody about this. I mean, that's not even close. No. Did he, we used to notice this when we used to do like short sales. Guys like that or, or women like that never read their e uh, mail. Well, the, by definition, if you're in financial distress, yeah, the first place you don't to feel better, you do not go to your mailbox. Right. right? No. Right. Because I mean, I don't think I'm in financial distress, and I he hate seeing that mailbox. There's never oh, there's I'm, never a nice letter sent to me. Hey, I Rick. got a nice I got a nice something in the mail yesterday. I got a thank you note from one of my friends. Well, and, really? and a gift card. Because you worked your ass off for it. I know. It. Yeah. I know. But but so the nice things, some nice things do come in the mail. Yeah, I, nice. I, it's the I've only thing I've, nice it. thing I've got in the mail in five years. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> other than the things I've ordered for myself. Right. I still have that your hope. set of knives. I still have that hope, and I don't know why, that the mail is going to bring some life-changing <laughs> you know, piece of paper to Ed me. McMahon. Right, like I'm going to go, Same. hey, I did have a long-lost uncle who was a billionaire. I, I, no one told me. Me. No. Well, like no, the IRS letter. Right, right, right. Congratulations, <laughs> Stu and Kathy. You we, guys filed right. on time. <laughs> right. Listen, we did our what own did you audit. you like that a letter from IRS? Yeah. That's nice. We did our own audit of the last 20 years, and we were completely wrong. Here's $74,000. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, IRS. That's Thank awesome. <laughs> we did our own audit. <laughs> All right, so that was your worst credit. Do you ever have, what's your worst borrower? Or, or is he up there? He must have been up there. Well, I mean, I consider about Well, mentioning word. names, of course, but... Right. No, of course we're not mentioning no, names. No, no. I mean, well, you have to think about, like, what do you consider a bad bar or is it bad credit? Is it bad income? Or is the client himself or Untruthful, herself just... I the, think, is the, the client. Let's go with the, the client. Let's talk borrower. psychology today. Mm -hmm. Do you have any crazy, crazy borrowers? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I have... Um, so usually throughout the process, you you have your real estate partner yep. give you a referral you'll talk to this referral you'll yep. take an application over the phone in person yep. however the client wants to do it uh, yep. you know they can do it online whatever 
Um, but a lot of it, until you see the documentation, is just word of mouth. You know, like, oh, yeah, I make $50,000. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> trust, I'm, I'm, trust, trust me on that one. Right. And then it's like, okay, well, thank you for all of this truthful information. But, you but can to, you, right. Yeah, can you give me your tax returns and your W-2s and, like, let's prove it? Um, <laughs> so I, I've had clients before be like, oh yeah, I've got $30,000 in the bank. I, you know, I can cover my down payment and closing costs. I don't need a seller credit. I don't need any help. I'm good. And then, uh, you, you get their bank statements and they have six grand. Do, in do they know you're yeah. able to check on that stuff? Yeah. I really don't know. It's, it's, the problem is that a lot of people think that, you know, I mean, granted, I wasn't in this industry in 2008 and before, but I think a lot of people still have the notion that, oh, oh right. no, I just, I give it to I them and it's, yeah. Like the it's no income, be, no assets, right, no it's verification. Be fine. It, there's not a lot of information. 110% and, of borrowing. Yes. Yeah. 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 No You've good. Been learning your stuff I here. I learn. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm just not a pretty face in a suit. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm really start. not at all. <laughs> You're going to have to start doing closings. With yeah. Would you wear that suit to a closing? Maybe we should do like a Wizard of Oz thing. Go ahead. I'm I go see. in, yep. all pretty, yep. and then you stand behind a curtain <laughs> and do the work. Sign that <laughs> document. Sign here. There's no prepayment penalty. <laughs> yeah. don't, don't, look, no, no don't, don't look behind that curtain. I could get a little, I could just wear headphones. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you could tell me you could walk me through Come it. Come back later. Like on, uh, yeah, 24, one of those, the little bugs. Yeah, there, yeah. That seemed to be, you can hear everything yeah. that's going on. They walk I, down. I worked with a guy on a TV show once that didn't learn his lines. <clears throat> and had a little bud in his ear, and he had an assistant who would oh, read so, the lines, and then he would just. So which which of our friends do we? Is it Steve Sweeney? No, no, no. Can he write? No, no, we won't go no, through the whole no. list. Somebody, yeah, but somebody you would know if I said the name. <laughs> I won't say the name because of our confidentiality agreement, right? Yes, between actors. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a borrower. Um, I don't know, a year or two ago, and the he calls up and he said, listen, or the wife called up and said, because she had to be at the closing, can you not make a big deal of my application at the closing? Remember? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because she had like a $24,000 <laughs> credit card that the husband <laughs> didn't know about. Yeah. <laughs> oh could you God. not make a big deal out of it? In other words, <laughs> like, yeah. like you could blow by like, you know, all your all your oh, liabilities. Oh, okay, yeah. this looks good. Just this flip looks that good. page over real quick. Right, right, right. Yeah. This yeah. looks good. This is, what the? <laughs> and I said, I said things are going to go really well for Jane Smith, or they're going to be getting divorced really bad. tomorrow yeah. morning. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So because you can't hide. I was from doing your, the closing. Mm -mm. No, and I said to Mr. Smith. Did you, you see this $24,000? <laughs> what the hell is your wife buying? You guys on the same page here? <laughs> yeah, so we've had a few of those. Mm -hmm. um, the, the husband has a few has had a few credit issues before, too, where uh, they have an account with a, a Victoria's Secret. And, yep, and the, the wife, the wife says, didn't know says, about I'm surprised. I don't have any Victoria's Secret outfits there. Ooh. I got Walmart. Walmart <laughs> lingerie. <laughs> Whoops! There is something wrong. <laughs> yeah, with that. that's wrong. That's so. Yeah, we've had some tough buyers there. But what do you see? And I, I know we we love to kid you about the. We joke and joke about but the millennials, but we uh, love millennials. We love millennials. Now, is your most of your borrowers? I, I guess they your age bracket or yeah, probably. I, I yeah. work with a lot of first time home buyers, yes. and they fall between you know twenty seven and thirty two. Is, is that because you target that, or is that just the way business is now? Honestly, it's just kind of the way business is. But if we're going to be honest, yeah, that's I, who you attract. Too, I'm, too yeah, late I'm, now. A, I'm a twenty. Yeah. I'm a twenty-seven year old and that, girl. Yeah, like right, I'm. Right, right, right. They're going to want to talk to someone that's, who's going to speak right. their language right. versus you don't yeah. want to talk to a sixty-year-old who's going to like talk down to them. Like right, mom and dad. right, right, <clears throat> right. So how do you how do you talk to them differently? Let's let's hear you. Let's hear you. Did your mommy <laughs> help you out with this <laughs> <laughs> application? <laughs> I was wondering when that was coming in. Well, I'm only kidding. No, no. So I, you, it's very rare that people my age have already owned a home. So I just talk, I just start the conversation. Oh, with that's like, a good idea. What do you What, what do you know well, you about mortgages? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that's good. Like, what do you What do you know? Have any of your family members purchased a mortgage? What have they told you? And then usually they'll tell so me, me something completely wrong. Can I ask you? Do wrong. they know a lot or little? Because I, I used to think they would be online all the time and knew everything about it, but not really. Okay, so I tell people it's Makes kind of... Makes this woman up now. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like going... When people go online, there's a ton of resources, a lot of like really good information, but yep. it, there's also just as much bad. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of like going to your doctor for your annual appointment and being like, oh, I have brain cancer. WebMD told me that. So then you see, you know, I'll talk to people and they'll 
be so educated and know so much. And then it's just like, oh, where'd you get all this information? And then they'll pull up these websites. I'm like, oh, no. no right, if you no. look at that, that's from, you know, 2006. That's right. not no, you're right. a thing anymore. You're right. That's what I was asking. Yeah. So people, um, definitely people my age are more connected uh, on social media and, you know, read a lot more online. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the biggest thing is that the information they consume isn't always accurate. So right. it's kind of taking what they know or what they think they know and then showing them like, okay, well, you're kind of on the right path, but this is actually just how it's, right, right, how right. it's done. Well, that, that's a that's a really good point because you do think like, you, you know, we deal with a lot of millennial buyers, right? And they they're, they're all over things that sometimes we're like, what are they, why are they focusing on, focusing right, right, on that? Right. You know what I mean? Like, like, like small, minute details. We have to get to that point. Well, you know what I mean? Like, so we, there's, there's a million other steps you have to go through before we worry about right. like who to make the checkout to, or mm -hmm. right, do you know what I right. mean? Like they they miss some of the bigger picture. A lot of the things that I find, um, probably the biggest conversation I have is either d like down payments. I, I don't have 20%. Well, you don't need 20% anymore. And then it's also student loans. People think, oh, well, I have to pay off, you know, $120,000 worth of student loans. Well, yeah, yeah, you probably do want to pay that down, but um, there are still programs out there that allow with higher debt to income ratios. And like, it's just, there's not a ton of information being like, it is possible to buy a house. That's what they're saying about the student or millennials is, so much student debt at this point. Well, that they don't even they can't they can't afford to save twenty percent because they're paying mm -hmm. down their student loans, yes. right? Which have high interest rates. I have a friend right now who has student loans, and her monthly payment is almost equivalent to a mortgage payment. Ooh, really? Oh yeah, yeah. Ouch. I mean, yeah. she's making great See, money. She's doing what she loves, but it's it's a tough pill yeah. to swallow for sure. I think everything's we got it ass backwards. Yeah, I think the worse your credit score is. Right, the lower your payment should be. <laughs> I think you're, you're right. Already proven you can't pay. <laughs> Why are you making it harder? You see that I, I like it. I can't afford this much. <laughs> what makes you think I can afford that much? That's awesome. Why yeah, would you like, lend to me at this right, amount? Why? Would, why? That's ridiculous. You're not making you know a smart not business choice. No, but I want that house. Right. right. <laughs> but I'm only going to be having this conversation with somebody else later on. <laughs> Because you gave me this. <laughs> Let's just cut to the chase. Yeah. Are your kids ready to buy? Or? My kids aren't ready to make their own dinner. <laughs> my my wife had to tell my son to stop dipping crackers in the... Peanut in the, butter? No, no. Even worse. Oh. The chicken salad while it was still in the fridge. Oh. Just take it out yeah. and put it on the cracker for yeah. the love of God. But they're still younger. How, yeah. how old are they? Uh, Gus is uh, 21 and Cecilia. Cecilia uh, will be 19 and... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. they're still... Yeah. They, they're still. They we just went down to New York to see Cecilia. She uh, stage managed to play at her school. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So we went down over Sunday and saw her... Good for her. her. ...production that she put together, and she did well. They're following your footsteps. Yeah. I wish they would. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they'd become mortgage people. <laughs> I don't know about that because I have one that's going to work at a law office. Yeah. And I'm thinking I wish she would just go with Celia to do a play. Yes, maybe you, just, I know, she you don't do have. Both. I don't know. I mean, she's doing great, you know. All right. Now we're chatting. Uh, Where were you earlier today? Now that we're kidding about I had an suit. audition. Okay. That's you want to tell us I'm about it? Like <laughs> we didn't get the call. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, you are, writing us, you are writing us in your no, next movie. No, I have to sign a confidentiality thing. Oh. <laughs> I can't tell you what it is. I, you do. Okay. I have to sign right. a thing that says I won't tell you All right. Well, that, 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 that. that adds to the secret right. allure right. of mystique. why he's yeah. dressed like that. Yeah. A lot of confidentiality agreements today. I'm not sure if we can talk much longer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be a very maybe, quiet podcast. Maybe we'll just do mine from now on. <laughs> Tony, it, uh, my guess is it's a revival of beach movies. <laughs> <laughs> the Bleach Bank Blanket Bingo. Yeah, yeah. That franchise. I'm going to be the Eric Von Zipper character. I don't All right, know Meg. That <laughs> so, Meg, so for that. Eric Von Zipper? Oh, classic. <laughs> no. I'll look it up. You know, before I got, right before I got here, I had a, a riveting conversation with uh, Frank Santarelli of The Sopranos, a uh, good riveting. friend of mine. Riveting about OTS. A, a pivotal moment in the Andy Griffith show. Oh, yeah. What was it? Uh, uh, the introduction of Aunt B. Oh, I don't know. And, I don't yeah, know why that. was that riveting? Because it's Frank, and he's got a 
brain the size of a peanut. <laughs> and the fact that you guys have spent any time right. thinking about the right. Andy Griffith show is amazing. Not you guys, him. He called me. I, I, Meg doesn't even know who Meg, Andy just Griffith say. is. Sure. No, I know who he is. Sure, I, just, I can't ever. Do you remember Matt? Yeah, you can't relate to this. I can't Matt, Matt, he can't was Matt. Yeah, he was Matlock. Yeah. All right, you've left us. It's like a tease. What happened with Aunt, Aunt B? Well, she couldn't do anything right, and Opie was upset. And then she was going to leave. Oh, because, Aunt B. Yeah, because she couldn't. She didn't know how to fish. She didn't know how to play baseball. And Aunt she, B was like 85 years old. Right. Well, you know, this was, it was different times back then. With yeah. little Ronnie Howard, so, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, and exactly. uh, so then Opie begged her to stay because if she left, how would she get by? And he'll teach her how to do all that stuff. Oh, wow. wow. So that was a little moment. Wow. <laughs> so it, it, it dragged it on for another 10 years. Yeah. yeah. But I, go back to your original statement. Why the fuck is anybody <laughs> wasting a second of their time thinking about a 45 year old show? I, don't, I didn't use the F word. No. <laughs> Actually, you're being conservative. It might be about 55 at this point. Right. It may be. Yeah, I, yeah, know. I know. But the I fact know. that somebody. Has, has, the, has the energy has the time Frank. in the hands the, Call Frank. the band he has too much in his, in his time when he's driving around that's yeah. his problem when he's driving to different gigs yeah. and he's doing oh he'll it. call me up at 8 o'clock in the morning yeah. I'm watching the oh, I'm yeah. watching the Beverly Hillbillies <laughs> really <laughs> you, did he find a you, riveting yeah, a riveting you, moment Meg you remember the Beverly Hillbillies yeah, oh she yeah. does yeah. alright yeah. classic she probably never watched it she just knows about I've it I've seen like one or two episodes okay. yeah it's on me TV you mm-hmm. flipping or whatever and TV uh, land TV land TV there you go land. Yeah. See? there you go yeah so let's let's go back to it. Um, <laughs> I that's know. my job, right? We're having a riveting conversation about Beverly Hillbillies. Like I kind of want to stay on this. No, no, no. Let's talk about. Um, what, well, let's what, just see what Meg knows about the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> Jethro. <not. laughs> let's not. <laughs> Gilligan's Island. Pat is when they're, Gilligan's when Island. They're moving. You What's know, that? and all the stuff is in their little like um, in the oh, truck. Yeah. In the yeah. truck. Well, yeah. it's like a pickup truck. Yeah, right? like a pickup truck. Yeah. And it looks the, like the t- tiki bar I want to buy. We'll You're talk not about buying that later. a we'll TV buy. We'll talk about it off the air. Tony says I can well, buy it. You know what? Um, I saw this lady driving. I think we left. We're leaving the podcast um, last Tuesday, and I was going down Route 20 North on 28. Yeah. And I saw this lady in like a four door sedan, and you couldn't see her. Um, it just looked like oh, a no, tra- I've seen that. Yeah. A tra- oh, yeah, no, a trash car. Right, trash. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Trash <clears throat> all the way up to her head. Oh, yeah. really? I've seen it. It was. It was all over the passenger seat. She was just had this little tiny spot as she's driving. You must have cringed. I was trying to get my camera out so I could take a picture because I know <laughs> nobody you would. While were I know, I know. I stopped, <laughs> but I was like, that poor lady can't get out of her own way. She has to take all her trash with her everywhere she goes. <laughs> Wait, was it like in bags or was it like she was going to the dump or was it just... No, 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 no. It was um, like, like hoarding. It was like hoarding, hoarding. in her car. Yeah. But I was like, why do you need that stuffed animal in the back seat? Like you could see all her, all the stuff. It was... Right. It back, sh- back in the 80s, there was a comedian, uh, the legendary Wid. He was from Philly. Never heard of him. He might still be working. I don't know. Uh, Let's look him up. that was his act. He had his car loaded with stuff. He was a prop guy. Yeah. And he would just load his car with stuff. And then he'd pull up in front of a club. He'd grab a handful of whatever he could. And that would be his act for the evening. <laughs> oh, my God. And he'd just travel the country doing <laughs> well, that. Well, I wish that this lady had the same. So maybe she, maybe <laughs> she maybe did. I don't think so. It was her. Maybe it was her. Maybe I don't think so. I Meg, felt really bad for her. Meg's saying I gave went. up doing like three applications. Now, let, <clears throat> let's talk about applications. Um, <laughs> so is it easier or harder for someone to get? Uh, like, is it a pretty s- simple process at this point, or how tight are, are the Fed is the Fed, or how like you we know? heard they were lightening up a little bit. We know it's always seasonal with the Fed. <clears throat> right. Uh, it was very easy, as you said, in two thousand eight. Well, it was very easy from like. <laughs> 2000 to right. like 2008, right? Right. Anyone then, could get a mortgage. And then they went completely the other way. No one could, no get, one a could get a mortgage. Yeah. But now we're hearing that it's lightening up a little bit here. Is that, is yeah. that what you're seeing? So I tell my clients, if you can prove it, so if you can give me the documentation, we can use it. Or yeah. we can. Okay. So it's it's one of those things where everything now has to have some kind of a t- documentation attached to it. So, yeah. you know, if you... If you're a single mom and you're receiving child support or you're a single dad and receiving child support, we can use that income. We just need, you know, the documentation about it. Now, a tip to your buyer is if you ask for it, they have to do it. It doesn't go away just because they forget to give it to you, right? We, right. What, we, we have some buyers that think, all right, maybe they'll stop asking yeah. me for it. Are they, are they looking? <laughs> right. Are they looking? You were serious about <laughs> <four>? <laughs> Let's talk about this um, 
misconception. Once you get a commitment letter, you're all set to close. <laughs> misconception. Right. Yeah. A huge misconception right. on buyers. Same shot, with right? marriage. <laughs> because you turn to the third page, right? And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there could be 15 conditions, and of which you have to meet. You are conditioned. You can have this money if you do all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's satisfactory to the lender, right? Correct. Um, I will say that I have had a nice string of referral partners, and you know, on the backside, there are um, co-listers who they'll make the commitment dates far enough out where we can give them a clear commitment letter. So that That's way, great. we don't what, have any title issues, appraisal, or you know, what is a clear con- commitment it's just letter? Literally, it's just like here you go. It's just a commitment letter that doesn't have any conditions on it. So you're basically cleared to close. Um, or no, because at that, at that point you still have to like review some final okay. documentations. Maybe we're waiting, you know, underwriting just has to kind of sign off on their last few things that are on their side of the house. Yep. But as far as like borrower facing conditions where they might need to, you know, pay for their appraisal or right, show ever funds run to close. You ever run into this where they got their commitment letter and you sent that out with a few conditions on it, and then they weren't able to make those conditions. Yep, you actually, it, ju- it actually just happened, which was really really. Important. So, yeah. but so so then they get denied, right? Yeah, but it's uh, after the financing date. Right. Um, so we, you know, it's really important for your lender and your 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 real estate agent to have a com- like mm-hmm. have that communication with one another and say, well, look, we, you know, I ha- I can give you a commitment letter that's going to have all these conditions on it, but let's, you know, let's try and extend the commitment date and, yeah. you know, see what we can do that's in the borrower's best interest. And the seller at that point, you know, you they've put in just as much time, you know, they're not doing anything on their side to make the buyers eligible, but they don't want to see this transaction blow up. So usually, and start all over again. Right. So right. usually they're willing to like extend um, the commitment and date. And all that's before the commitment date. So what we see sometimes is it happens after the commitment date. They don't get those conditions taken care of and they haven't asked for that extension. So at that point, their deposit money's in jeopardy. Yep. You and we know a, that. You ever throw a condition in there just to see if they're reading? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you must show up on a unicycle nice. jungle with your hatchets. <laughs> no. I'm you not, should try that. I'm not malicious, <laughs> but I will. Um, it doesn't you have thought to be about that, it though, right? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have to be that exact one. I was just yeah. throwing. I was just, I was just spitballing. Ask that, for a vial yeah. of blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where's your, I see you met every condition except where's your blood? <laughs> I think you should do a closing. Yeah. As Kenny Rogerson did at your tribute with helium, <laughs> helium. balloon <laughs> ingested in you. And nice. you could do the whole closing with helium balloon. Hey, how you doing? Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to have Kenny Rogerson that, do that again. I know. That's the that caught his attention. <laughs> Initial here. <laughs> <laughs> was that the best act you ever seen in a long time? No, oh, I, I was hurting myself. Yeah, I was hurting myself. All right, you two. <laughs> we, no, I no, have no. More questions for Meg. No, Hurry I just. Up. You, you know why? Because in this time. whole pool of studio audience, I happen to see a celebrity in the in the okay, audience. Okay, in two more minutes, you can introduce him. Maybe he'll come up and do something okay. for us. So, <laughs> he'll do something funny. So He's not Meg, a monkey when you just call him it? up and on whim, he does something no, funny. I bet he will. <laughs> I bet he will. <laughs> 20 no, bucks. Is. 20 bucks. <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> um, so what's a, what's a reasonable time frame? I'm seeing a lot of short time frames that are, are hard or I think are hard to meet from my end, you know, because we got to do the title work and all that stuff. But I'm seeing like less than 30 end, days like or our end. Sorry. Thank you. Yep. Thank Cause you. it's me and Meg having a conversation at this point. <laughs> well, you want to, you want to be realistic and set your standards. What is a so, realistic goal? Um, I think so right now movement, we have an average of 18 days for, to clear to close, but that's pretty good. A lot needs to happen in that time. You need to have a motivated buyer and a motivated seller. Yes. That's a key. Like you can have a motivated buyer, but if the seller and their agent are, you know, are lacking or not. Well, if they don't answer your phone call and they don't respond to your text, I mean, your email, you could go a day, two days, three days, and you're losing ground every day that someone doesn't respond. Right. And the biggest part that they play, honestly, is scheduling the appraisal and getting that done. So, you know, it's one thing, you know, we can, we schedule it through the appraisal management company, but then it's up to the appraiser to get in touch with the listing agent and schedule that. A week could go by. Right. And that's where you lose your week. So Mm -hmm. now you're at 23 days. Yeah. So it's, so I think 30 days is definitely the industry standard. Okay. Anything sooner than that is, you know, not at movement mortgage. mortgage. Yeah. No. Not at double M's. Well, you know, I think like, you know, anywhere between 30 and 40 days is realistic for a, makes for a nice, easy transaction. Yeah. There's there's definitely enough. Yeah. Is your appraisal company slowing you down at all or are they doing all right now? Um, no, they're actually fine. We have a, thankfully we have a relationship with them. 
where they get our reports back within five business days, assuming there's nothing you know wrong and a right. inspection is needed of the property. I haven't heard a lot of. Uh, at one point in the industry, the re appraisals were taken three and four weeks. Do you remember that, yeah. Rick? Yeah. I haven't heard a lot of appraisal problems lately. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard that, uh, that oh the property didn't appraise out or we don't, we're still waiting on the appraisal. I haven't heard any of the appraisal issues. Mm -hmm. In the last couple of years, no, I haven't either. So that's kind of maybe they're getting out. more more companies involved, or yeah. Well, I mean, it's a it's a business itself too, right? So right. It, they're not going to continue to get business from the AMCs if the their, their the, appraiser is taking three weeks, where another appraisal company could the be. The buyers taking, and lenders you know, can't days. choose the appraisal companies, no. right? No, no, it's a double blind system. Yeah. Who chooses it? The appraisal management company. So we send in our request, and right. then they, <clears throat> however they do it, a lottery or however they have it scheduled, they send it out to. So that's changed company. a little bit since 2008 right. yeah. when they right. Well, they we could get pick who we friend. wanted. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you could follow the appraiser. Around. Don't you think my house looks like it's worth like what 480? Kathy, <laughs> Kathy back walked around in her bathing suit when she wanted <clears throat> no. it. Oh, Stewie. Oh, Stewie, Stewie did in this bathing suit. <laughs> <laughs> that's even going to for her. Yeah, <laughs> it worked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I oh, think boy. we've got a lot. Are you going to call Kenny up here? Kenny seems very Because I have intrigued. $20 riding on this. <laughs> Kenny Rogerson looks very busy there in, in the middle of the crowd. But uh, he, we'd love to have his real estate wealth of knowledge come on to give us a little tidbit. <laughs> here we go. You, you guys talk for a second. Here yeah, you're giving up your... your, your, your uh, uh, Ken Rogerson, one of the funniest humans on the planet. He also happens to be one of your best buds, and one of right? my best friends. Yes. <laughs> yes. So only a so little bit. So he is funny. Little, okay. We <laughs> just uh, Kenny, uh, Lenny, and I, and Jordan Tuffalo, a friend of the yeah. shows as well. We just did a short uh, this past weekend uh, called "The Dirty Uber Driver." Oh yeah, I saw the picture. Yeah, yeah. It's very, well. We think it's very funny. We'll that means it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it's very. This is a real estate show. Yes, because <laughs> I just bought a really large potted plant. <laughs> There's a lot of dirt in the pots. That's that's about all the real estate I own. Does that count? Sure. And I closed on it by myself. <laughs> I said, how much for the plant? They said, $20. I go, all right. You didn't have to take out a loan or anything? Oh, yeah. I had to take out <laughs> What am I, made of money? <laughs> Did you pay me for the dirty Uber movie? No. no. Not a nickel. I showed up oh, for nothing. Oh, you guys didn't get paid? No. no. Oh, you just do that for fun? We do it, for the, we do it so we can hang around together yeah, on yeah. Sunday and no one can yell at us. Uh, the Kowloon fed us. Oh, yeah. Okay. Was, so free food. Free food. Free right. food. Yeah. We yeah. work for food. Yeah. Clothing. Yeah. Well, and, um, Tony works for cigars. Yeah. I do yeah. work for cigars. I know. And yeah. coffee sometimes. Yeah. He does look. What happened? I had an audition. <laughs> oh. It won't go any farther than this, but it was. You look good, though. Thank you. I feel you clean pretty. up nice. I like to feel pretty. Well, you do. Yeah. Can I tell you that? I, do, I don't you. tell you that enough, Bradley. No, thank you. I don't hear it enough. No, I'm, I'm sure you don't. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard it. <laughs> Oh, pretty, boy. pretty and me really don't fit in the same sense. <laughs> Even when I look good, they no one ever goes. You look pretty. Yeah, that's me and tall. Right, right. Go, well, they, you look, they, you're so they, tall. They go, you, you can pass for a human. I'm not sure if they can hear us at all, but the Kenny Rogers line we're using or story last week was with the Lenny Clark show when the show got canceled for three weeks and you were still still interviewing interns. Which, which, oh, you uh, when you were writing for, oh, uh, for the Sunday, Sunday, Comic, yeah. Sunday yeah. Comics? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. You know, I had to keep doing my job just because he was there. <laughs> <laughs> I also asked for his parking spot. <laughs> That's true. Use it no, he right, had a nice spot. Why should I have to park way up on the top? He right. had right by the door. Sometimes I think we know their lines and know, jokes better than they know their own <laughs> lines than, and jokes. More than likely, yeah. <laughs> I say, Tony, remember that camping story? And he's looking at me like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to make it up right now. There's something I say. I don't know. People say it all the time. What about that bit? I go, whose is that? You <laughs> sure? I go, really? Yeah. From 83, I go, yeah, like I recall the 80s <laughs> or the 90s. We're asking some of the uh, Lenny Clark why he needed the ride to the Cape. Oh, uh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. He's like, I don't even yeah, I no. went to the Cape. No, because you know, <laughs> like, but Lenny's different. Lenny will say things on stage, and he won't remember when he gets. Right, right, that was yeah. a great line. Who's that? I go yours. <laughs> you just said it seven minutes ago. Right. I'm, we're that good, but, right? But sometimes, like you know, we turn it on and off when we're going on stage. So, like when I'm just walking around being me, I go like I, I, yeah. that part of me is far yeah. away. Yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah. It's like yeah. the movie. I didn't read the whole script because I wasn't in it. Right, right. Someone said, what's it about? I go, I don't, I don't know. know. I get run over by Lenny. That's all <laughs> I know. <laughs> the rest of it was not me. Well, this is a little bit off the cuff, so right. that's why yeah. I don't remember the uh, spontaneous right. lines. Right. right, how's that go? Uh, nothing, 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 my, my line. My line. Nothing, 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 nothing,
Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me over. This is good. Thanks for talking real estate. Give me my 20 bucks. Let's wrap it up. Should we wrap it up? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. We're out of time. All right, Meg. Was that so bad? No. 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 Meg, you you want to give out the phone? Here's here's the question. (laughs) Would you come back on this show? I would, yeah. All right. Oh, there, 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 there you go. That put you in the one percent. Yeah, I was gonna say that's a burst. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, you guys did a horrible job of scaring me off. <laughs> All right, here's the real test, and we'll wrap it up. With this uh, Meg, if you want to give you a phone number yeah, and where you how, work and some contact information. All right, so I'm Meg McLaughlin. <laughs> I, I always work love for, this spot. I don't know where I'm supposed to be looking. <laughs> I'm, anyway, right, I'm yeah, Meg yeah, McLaughlin. Right. I work with Movement Look Mortgage. Look right in Kenny's dreamy eyes. That would do it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm Meg McLaughlin. I work with Movement Mortgage. You can reach me at 401-477-6064. Yeah. Do you need- I, I think that's the right number. Should I repeat it? Ken- Kenny's calling it right now. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Tony V's. A uh, pleasure. Brother. Twin hey, brother. Tony. We didn't even tell the story. Uh, Maybe next week. Next week. Time. Paralegal extraordinaire, Kathy Oldshauser. Thanks yep. for joining us. Ed Sullivan, prolific producer for the Real Estate House Party. Special guest, Kenny Rogerson. Woo! Oh, bye. Bye. (laughs) The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.